Hi everyone, this is Jeannie Ellis, also known as Scrapbooking Mama. And today I want to share with you a kit by Tater Made Cards for You, who is our sponsor for Crafters Castle Challenge Blog for the mo month of March. So here I've got already some printed papers out, and uh, this kit is called Passport to Italy. First off, I want to show you the uh, ephemera pack. It's already printed out, all the sheets are, but all I gotta do now is cut those. And then here's another page, and I printed on both sides of that one for my kit. And now is the, uh, uh, what I'm using for a cover. And then we have another sheet of the same designs from the other papers. So there you have all the different papers in that kit, and they are stunning. Um, now, what I want to let you know is that the monthly challenge prize is the kit that you see printed there. Um, this is a design team kit, and everyone who wants to join can internationally also. So all skill levels and all crafts are welcome to join in on this March challenge. And this is the kit for Tether Maids cards for you. So I'm going to link in below in the description box both the challenge blog and the shop. So be sure you check that out. And make sure that you go ahead and check out all the designers that are using this kit for the month of March. So stay tuned and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with this gorgeous kit. Okay, so I've decided to go ahead and make a mini album, not the typical one uh, with envelopes, but using uh, these envelopes to make an accordion type envelope. And I have probably, the envelopes are probably about four and a half by five and a half in size. Um, so any size envelope will do. It doesn't matter what size, but I'm using about four and a half by five and a half. So you open up the envelopes the same direction and lay them one on top of the other. The back of the one envelope on the side, right side, will be on top of the flap of the first envelope. And you glue only the flap. Don't glue the whole back side of the envelope on the right because otherwise you're going to get glue all over the place. All you need it is on the inside of that flap there. So I'm using the Beacon 3-in-1 glue. And you can use ATG tape or something like that, but I just like using the liquid glue just so that I can get some, uh, have some wiggle room to adjust what I need to have done. So, you know, that's all I'm doing is just gluing and I'm gluing all the way around that flap on the end on the inside. So next thing you do is just take the back of that envelope on the right there and lay it on top. Again, they're going the same direction. They're not going in opposite directions. They're going on top of each other. Bottom of the back side to the top, top inside of the flap. So, sorry about the fuzziness there. I've got on autofocus, and if I don't have an autofocus, it doesn't work right. Anyway, uh, I just adjust it and uh, just make sure that it glues down really well. And then I check it, as you see on the back side, that's all I'm doing. And um, I do it all the way across that way. Don't change any directions. I do it all the way across that way. Now, at this point, I'm just checking the folds and everything, make sure I'm getting it, do, uh, doing it right. So uh, I, right there, I have just four envelopes attached, and I will be attaching a fifth one uh, because I think five is better than having four. And so it's always a good idea to check things in between times. Now it's all glued together and I'm happy with the result of it. So um, I am just checking the folds on it, make sure I've got my Mountain and Valley folds. And uh, that piece right there to the left will be my front cover. That's my back. 
and that flap will be glued down. And uh, I'm going to use that paper that's got the grapes on the front on it, the green paper with the grapes. That's going to be on my front, and I will be right back with more. So now it's time to take a chipboard, and it's a very thin chipboard, and it's going to be in my front cover and also put onto the back cover. Plus, I need to make sure that I have it centered into the cover properly. So I'm going to get ready and glue that down, and I'll be right back. Now I've got my chipboard piece down. Again, it's a thin, very thin piece of chipboard. And I'm making sure that my design piece that I want is on the top. And uh, once that glue is pretty dry, I'm going to miter the corners by cutting at a diagonal on each of the four corners. I leave an eighth of an inch space uh, between the chipboard and the corner there because that way it'll be easier to miter and to fold uh, once I do that. So once I'm sure that it's pretty dry and everything, I'm going to next take uh, an embossing tool and I'm going to score along the four sides of that chipboard. Doesn't matter which side you start first, as long as all four of them are scored. So that way it'll be an easier fold to do. Now I'm just folding them over so I can make sure that they're good and creased. And, you know, I'll be checking to make sure that it's, you know, all centered, everything. But once it's all creased, I'm going to be gluing those sides down with my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Again, you can use any kind of tape, but I choose to use my liquid glue. So here will be my gluing process. Now it's all glued on. I'm going to check on uh, the spacing of the cover to the envelope piece there. And, you know, I can't, I got to make sure that the left edge of that cover is at the left edge of the envelope piece. It can't extend on the back. It can extend to the top and the bottom and the left side, but not to the back of the envelope on the right side because then it would mess up my fold. So anyway, there it is. And I've got the spacing standard. Looks like it. I won't need to use any paper on the inside cover. So that's good. Then I'll be covering the back piece also to the back of the mini album. I'll be right back. Okay, so I was busy recording everything and not, did not notice that my uh, webcam had done some kind of a software update. Or actually my computer did and it always, every time I do, it does that. It messes with my webcam and I have to reset everything and it reset my uh, speaker. So my mic. So it was recording in a different microphone which sounded like I was in a tunnel. So anyway, now that I have my chipboard cover on the front and on the back, you can see I now have my accordion all ready to go. So it's on the, the inside cover and the back. That way when it folds, it's going to go like this. So that's the way I've got it set up. And, you know, and, and you can do different ways if you want to. So that means I've got, you know, I can put a decorative page on this end and, of course, something over here. And I've got all these pockets. I can either cover them or uh, go ahead and use them as pockets. So there we are. There's my accordion. All ready to be done. So first thing I'm going to do is... Um, go ahead and do some decorating. I mean, do some uh, pages, get some pages done. Um, I can go ahead and put, say, for instance, let me do this one instead. I can put this on here and leave it open here for a pocket. So I can have some inserts inside. 
I can do that or I can, you know, seal the whole thing up and if I center it, nobody's going to really notice that that pocket was there. And I could also, I've got this flat paper, cut that down and set it inside just to keep it from being seen that there is an envelope there. I don't know if I made any sense just then. I think I got flustered because of that. But anyway, I can go ahead and decorate these pages. And I am going to have to print out some more paper, which is okay. So once I get this all, all the pages in here, then I'll decorate the outside. But the next thing I want to show you too is something else. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have this beautiful paper that's from a company called The Paper Temptress, and I'll leave a link below, but it's beautiful, beautiful paper. It's got little columns in it, and it's real shiny. It's a luster paper, and I thought it would be real pretty to make something out of this, and I'll show you because I want to put it, it printed really nice on, on the digital paper, printed really nice on this paper, and it's just something that I wanted to try to create for you and what for the my album that is not just for you but for my album <laughs> so what I am going to do is first of all I'm just going to cut these apart I need to make sure that this is a square and it has to be very lightweight paper uh, the tutorial I saw didn't really give any specifications except that it is out of post-it paper post-it paper that was you know bigger size and I'm going to make this a I think I'll make it four and a half by four and a half square no actually let's do yeah four and a half by four and a half duh Let's make sure we do that right. So it doesn't really matter what size, as long as it's square, but it has to be very lightweight paper. And this is very lightweight paper. There's four and a half. Well, I can't do four and a half on that side, so we're going to do four inch square. So I need to fix the other side to four inches. This is beautiful paper and put it printed on this paper, printing that digital on this paper is gorgeous. I mean, it's just beautiful. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the print on the inside and I'm taking it and I'm folding from uh, triangle point to triangle point, make it into just folding it in triangle wise rather than half so then I've got this now I'm going to fold it over this way so it's kind of, it's an origami piece and I don't do it perfect okay I try but it doesn't always work that way but if you follow the steps then it'll work just fine And I want to make sure that I get that down there good. And then you fold it to point again. So you're doing three times, doing that side, doing the triangles three times. So now you've got it folded. And then you take the last fold that you do. Let me see if I can get a little closer. Okay, the last fold you do is that you're going to take and just simply, rather than doing another triangle, you're taking this point to this point, folding it over to the edge over here. So you're just folding it just like that from here to over here. And this is where I have my issue because it's not as light as the uh, post-it post paper, the notes. But it's light enough that I can still do it to a degree. Oh, 
Okay, and then I take my scissors and I go from this point here where the fold is and I just kind of do a curve. And then from that point at the end of that curve that you did, you start doing some little sections like this. I can't really tell you how to explain it, but you're just cutting at angles and going down from that point back down. Okay, just make sure that you don't cut all the way down. Okay, um, so now just turn it over. And what you're going to do is unfold it. Let me see if I can get it. And then you have this gorgeous flower here. Now, isn't that pretty? And you can make smaller if you want to. I've already got some here I've, I've print, uh, cut out already. And you can add like this piece here, this layer here on top of here and just continue layering. Now, if it gets too much smaller than that for me, I can't do it. <clears throat> it's just too hard for me. But I saw some that were just gorgeous. And here's the big one that I did. And, and the purple's not really the right color on there, but it looks so pretty together. So that's what I'm doing for the outside. It's just something really fun. So I thought that would be really pretty to use this on this on this paper and make a flower out of it. And I'll probably just put two there. There we go. And then you put a little stem into it or whatever you want to, a rhinestone or whatever floats your boat. Anyway, I am going to decorate the inside now of the pages. And I just wanted to show you that little flower using that digital paper with some uh, beautiful specialty paper. I love it and how it came out. So I will be back with the decorated mini album. Okay, I have my accordion mini album done with the flower. I have three layers of it. Two of the layers have the printed digital papers on them, and it came out really nice. And the stamen in the middle, I just did a little, uh, little fold on that and cut the little strips in it. You know, that's, that's something I can always show you later, or you can look it up. Uh, but anyway, I've got three layers on it with the stamen, and I have a lace piece in here that I've put glitter diamond glass diamond glass glitter, if I can say it right, from Renee Bouquet's on there. And of course the sentiments are on here. And then I just open it up like this. And you can see I have it all decorated in here too. Uh, I have tags inside, two of the pockets. I only made two pockets. Tags over here and tags over here. And the reason the lighting is this way, it's because it's at night. And uh, I you know, wanted to make sure you got the true colors. And these are the true colors on there. So anyway, isn't that pretty paper? It, you know, I really, really, really enjoyed making this. And the back of it, it's the same way. You can decorate the back of it and put pictures, photos, whatever you want on the back too. So, you know, it just came out the way I needed it to. So I hope you enjoyed this project. And be sure to enter the uh, challenge over at Crafty Crafter's Castle uh, Challenge blog. And check out the paper. And if you enter, you get a prize from TaylorMade Cards for you. So that will be the digital kit for the month of March. So, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you the next time. Bye for now, and many blessings.